for dude. Uh, how, uh, yeah, no, over there. Over there, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is where we need to go, right? Right there. Sweet, nice job. Ah, Are we safe? We're safe. Okay, sweet. <laughs> okay, we're right here. Don't get ran over, but this is the spot. And this is the plant right here. It grows all along the side of this road. This is my favorite spot to get this kind of plant. So when I'm harvesting plants, well, don't get stuck, don't get it stuck in your head that you have to go and be in the middle of nowhere to be able to find these kinds of plants because a lot of amazing kinds of plants that you're gonna use for different things in your life are growing in places just like this. It is noisy here. I'll harvest this plant here and then we'll go to a nice quiet spot and uh, finish what I'm trying to talk about. Whew. Okay, so this plant right here, it's fall time, so you don't see a lot of the green leaves, but um, this is what I'm looking for. This is this year's growth. It has leaves, it's gonna shed it because it's fall time, but this is last year. It didn't rot, it's just still standing. And it's real nice and crisp like this. And I'm gonna talk more about this plant, but right now I'm just gonna harvest and leave this spot and then we'll be really talking about stuff. Okay, I harvested enough from this plant. There's a few more plants right over here and then we'll get out of here. Again here, hopefully you can see the difference between this year's growth. If I try to pull it off, it's really squishy and doesn't break off. But last year's growth is nice and snappy. And this is the kind of material that I'm trying to get. This is too old. See how brown it is? Um, here's last year's. It's probably a lot easier to see in real life. But what I'm going to try to teach you is how to find this plant on your own. Okay, let's get out of here to a nice spot. Ooh, yeah, this looks pretty. Nice. Yeah, come on down. Okay, nice private and nature -y spot. Exactly what I was looking for. So, yeah, to the... Uh, Unfamiliar eye, this stuff just looks like a pile of sticks. But it might be your job to go look it up on the internet and try to identify this plant. Maybe you can get with a uh, plant person that can identify where this plant is at in your area. It grows all throughout North America. This plant is called dog bane. And uh, yeah, where we were at, that was my favorite place to get it. But I find dog bane in places like this, a lot of times near the side of a river where it's got really rocky, like a rocky bank. And I see dog bane. A lot of times the dog bane is really small there though. This is nice and big stuff. Um, and what we're gonna do today is make cordage, make string. So it goes like, what, thread, string, cord, rope, you know, you can go all kinds of crazy things. But this plant is one of my favorites because dogbane is one of the strongest natural fibers, not only in North America, but the world. So it's really good. Other names for this plant is called Indian hemp, um, other things. But dogbane is probably its most common name. Bane is another name for poison, so dog poison, basically. It is a poisonous plant when it is green. Right now, though, when it's dry, all those chemicals are out of it. And as you're working with it, you know you're working with the right plant because it leaves sort of a waxy residue on your hands. But what I have to do now is process this twig and get the long fibers out of it, which is kind of the bark of this plant. So what I do is I take this, and I crunch it up, I crunch it up this way, and then I crunch it up this way. And usually, it winds up cracking itself into quarters. So there's four different pieces. 
You can use your mouth too. And then go the other way, depending on how tough it is. But you've got all these different parts. And I'm just gonna split it in half, two pieces on end, each end. Now I have this, so the inside of this uh, really hard, almost woody stuff, you're gonna take that and break it off until you start to get to some fibers right there, which is the outer coating of this, of this stem. Now that here's where a certain technique is. You wanna try to get as long a fibers as you can possibly get. If you cut corners and just try to just try to strip this, just strip it, it down, down the whole stem, you're gonna lose all the fibers. So you have to do it the hard way. You have to take little bits of it. And what I do is roll it back and forth. So I can take this, take about an inch section off, get like that, and then pull it up from this end. And then you've got this wood that you don't really need. And what's left behind is this really long bark. So I'm gonna do this. It's gonna take um, a couple minutes to get all of this and all this. And making string from wild materials is kind of one of the basics for outdoor survival, for bushcraft. But I don't want to really want to call that bushcraft or survival skills. These are just human skills. These are what people have known how to do for tens of thousands of years. So I'm using this dog bane or Indian hemp, but if you can't find Indian hemp, there's lots of other kinds of natural fibers that are out there. Not every plant makes good rope, but that's a nice good long fiber. But there's things like uh, if you're over in the, on the Pacific coast, the native people would use uh, the bark of cedars, uh, roots of spruce. Uh, you can use milkweed. Um, there's a lot of other flax. There's lots of other kinds of materials that you can make string out of, but you can imagine how handy it would be to be able to make string, thread, rope. You can even make it out of uh, things like, uh, well, yucca, if you go down into the Southwest, yucca fibers, and all that requires a different kinds of processing. But I've been in, uh, I can remember I was in the highlands of Bolivia. They don't have dog bane. The only thing they have up there was this really long grass and the whole village would get together and they would make rope out of really long blades of grass and they would add it up to make rope that was literally this big around. And then they would use that as the cable to go across to be able to make suspension bridges so they could walk across big rivers that were far too treacherous, far too treacherous, far too many rapids and things to be able to go by uh, to swim. It would kill people. So they needed to make these big long suspension bridges. And it was amazing to watch an entire village weave together. It would start from just blades of grass to making rope. And then they would keep adding that rope, ply it together until it was like, splay it together until it was like, yeah, literally this big, big cables. Okay, so I have this, these fibers here. I'm going to get them wet, which is why I chose to be by water. Okay. Just gonna dunk this in the water here real quick. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get a couple of these pieces. Good deal. Get those kind of organized, put the ends together. Okay. And yeah, I have the ends here. So you can see how long of fibers I have. Okay, if you have some ends like this that are sticking out, don't worry about that. Just try to get all that nice, there we go, cool. Okay, and a lot of times you'll find out that you'll have the butt end of the stick is wider, you get wider pieces than at the very ends of the stick. So if you have wider ends, I'm gonna start with kind of two bundles. So this was a butt here and the butt, 
is right here. So I'm gonna put the tip here and the butt here so they'll even out as I'm making this rope. You'll figure it out later. So what I'm gonna do is take these ends here. And this is just for instructional purposes to do that first. I can just tie these with a little knot here. And again, um, I'm just teaching you the basics. Once, you, once this is a practice that's familiar to you, there's all different ways of doing it. But okay, so I have kind of two different pieces here, right here. What I wanna do is initially just get these all kind of rolled up. Why I like to get it nice and wet is the fibers kind of stick together a little bit easier. Okay. See, once I roll it, I can do this. It's kind of rolling together like this. And so I'm taking all these loose fibers like this, that's right here, okay? See that right there? And then it just becomes so much more manageable. It's, this is a lot better in the, when you have shorts on because it, this stuff sticks to your skin. It does pull all your leg hairs off, but see that's a lot easier and more manageable here than with this, but I'm gonna do the same thing. Now with this, how I rolled it, I rolled it going out that way. I'm gonna do the exact same way. Roll it the same way. Get it started a little bit. Sometimes it just Okay. And remember, once these fibers are nice and moist, they tend to stick together a little bit easier. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So, there you go. Okay, two little strands like this. Now it's not pretty yet. Here is where the detail comes in. Um, do you have, Dylan, give me your shoe real quick. Thank you. Okay. What we're gonna do, put this right here, is say for example, I have those two things, okay? I am going to wrap these together. When you look up close, that looks like a rope, right? Okay? If I let go, it stays there. Okay, so why am I showing you this with Dylan's shoelaces? It's because this is, this is how you make cordage. You have to do it the right way. I am twisting. Twisting this, like how I'm twisting it right now, looks like I'm going counterclockwise. It doesn't matter if you go counter, start with counterclockwise, you go clockwise. I'm just, uh, the way my hands work right now, I'm gonna take this and go counterclockwise. This is where you have to listen. If I choose to get this twisted counterclockwise, because it's going this way, okay, from where I am, I am also going to be twisting this counterclockwise as well. So both of them are going counterclockwise, okay? So these are both twisted counterclockwise. Here is again where you have to listen, okay? Since I am going counterclockwise on these two strands, by putting them together, I need to twist them clockwise, okay? So when it does that, they stick together and it looks right, okay? So it's like that. And when I let go, it stays that way. If you do it wrong, it will not do that. So you can imagine if I'm twisting this one this way and I'm twisting the other one, they're both going like this. See if I can do this. If they're going like this, you gotta twist them now going the opposite direction. Do you get that? Try that, practice that sometime. That's a hard one. Okay, now if you were gonna go clockwise, 
if you're gonna choose to, to twist these clockwise, when you twist them both together, they need to be counterclockwise, okay? Do I need to express that? If you can't figure it out, rewind it and watch it again. Now, I'll show you if you do do it wrong, like if you go like this and I'm, I'm twisting it counterclockwise and I'm twisting this counterclockwise and then I put them together counterclockwise See, see how that looks? It doesn't even look like rope anymore, okay? And it just unravels. Okay? Cool. Now, getting back to the natural fibers. If you wanna practice on shoelaces or other ropes around, it might be a good idea. Uh, here's how I'm going to do this, okay? I have this knot, I put it in my mouth. I am following how I twisted it. I'm twisting it this way. And I'm going to keep twisting this way. Okay. They're both being twisted the same way. Like this way. This way. Now, I go the opposite direction. Keeping keeping these two strands very tight as I'm doing it. It's very important. Tight meaning, meaning really bound up. That The more bound up you have these two little pieces, the prettier the rope is gonna be. So just hold on. See, I'm twisting, making sure that this rope is really nice and twisted. See that? Once they're both really tight, get a close up. Okay, it's starting to look like rope right there. It's gonna look even more prettier, so hold on. If you don't wanna use your mouth, you can use your toes. Or you can, use, you can tie the end to a chair or anything around the house or a, or a fence or whatever. Just now it's gonna be easier. So I'm twisting this. Again, see how I'm twisting I'm twisting it the same way, and then okay, my fibers are getting a little bit dry. I'm going to wet these one more time again and have them be a little bit more manageable. Okay, all right. How good a close-up can you get on that? Okay, does that look like a rope? Dylan, does that look like a rope? It's starting to look like a rope. Okay, good, good. Okay, good job, now, <laughs> when you do this, it should look like that. It looks nice and ropey, being like attached to each other. They're being pressed against one another so it doesn't unravel itself. If you don't do it the right way and it just looks like this, all those fibers are gonna break. When it's like this, this is crazy strong. This is like insanely strong. Here, Dylan, take this. I'm gonna switch the camera over to you. Now, do you have this? Now, break it. Come on, try it harder. Harder, man. <laughs> okay, all right, good. So is it, it's actually strong, right? Yes. You can even have, here, get, get the camera back on me. Cool. All right, hopefully I proved my point. Dylan thinks he's tough. He's got these big arms, but it's just chicken fat. Um, but yeah, this is crazy strong. I, there's, I can't break it, there's no way. I can get probably string I found with, with especially with dog bane, you can get stuff that's as, you can make dental floss out of this stuff, like crazy strong, that thick. To probably teach you a little bit more, I would like to show you how to, um, what happens when you run out of rope. This means your whole life you can only deal with ropes that are this long. Well, if you need longer rope, which we often do, we just take another section of this. Um, you can take the ends. If you see, these are the two sections. This one is a lot more hardy than this one. I can take 
some more fiber that I have, get it wet. I don't want to go to the creek right now. And you simply add them together and see if you can see on the micro, this, this thing is wound up like this. So you're going to keep that bound together and just, just kind of wrap them together just like that, just temporarily. Okay. Now, this is where you can add, get this nice and synced up right in there. And then you just start wrapping again and see how you, you added those materials. And pretty soon it'll be like as one, okay? Okay, cool. It's definitely a good finger workout because all my muscles and my fingers are cramping up. But I'm starting to make some string. When I come to my tail end, since I wrapped my string the correct way, I can let go and it's not going to unravel. Okay? All right. Dylan, give me your wrist. Okay, I'm going to just I'm going to make a nice bracelet. Okay. I'm going to give you a nice friendship bracelet because you're my friend. Actually, Dylan, I want to say I've appreciated our friendship. So thank you. <laughs> Hope you can try that. Let me know how it goes. Oh, okay. And then one story before we go is, so native people would make entire nets that would span across the river with dog bane. And uh, one time I have a friend who I've learned a lot of this outdoor survival stuff from. They made a huge net that they spanned across this big, huge section in a sagebrush desert. And then their friends would all get together and they would beat all the sticks and they'd chase all the rabbits into the fence. It was a rabbit catching fence, all made out of dog bane. Can you imagine how much dog bane? It, take them, it took them like months to be able to make this huge net, but it was, a, it was amazing. But that was, that's just the kind of life that a lot of native people would have, you know, getting ready to harvest all of the salmon coming up a river like this that could feed families and be traded all across the country fish like that and they would it was all made out of nets out of natural material stuff like dog bane so it's just uh i don't know i think about those days i think about how much work went into things but um awesome very cool so yeah okay cordage making cordage the natural way bye if you like what you've just seen please don't forget to like comment and subscribe